Hi everyone, Gerard Scarpacey here, Craft Hairdresser and Collection. And uh, we're excited today because we are with our friends from Davinez, James Abu Alba. How are you doing, everyone? And you're going to get to meet Alicia Richardson. Alicia Richardson. So I told you I'd mess it up. Uh, pretty soon. This is a beautiful model of Marie, who actually works with Davinez. We've got a very fun kind of uh, multifaceted lesson here. We're going to start off with a little bit of cutting, and then we're going to get into Alicia is going to be doing some color. So we're going to see a little bit of both. We'd love to hear all your questions. I'll be manning the phone and uh, looking for your questions. But in the meantime, let's get started off with this cutting technique. You can see James is doing some dry cutting. So uh, take it away, James. How you doing, everyone? Thanks for taking the time uh, this Saturday afternoon so we can share some Davinette's love with you. Marie is kind of a client who's come in. She's had long hair or short haircuts. She's in the process of growing it out. Um, so she wasn't wanting a lot of length removed, she wasn't a, wanting a big change. And so this is kind of like a typical appointment where you can add some personalizing, some texturizing techniques once your shape has grown out and you can see where weight is sitting may where you, maybe you don't want. Or you can, you know, add a little bit more funk to it for the day. But what I wanted to share with you is just a few texturizing techniques that I use. And this is like slicing, channeling, people will have different names for it, but I'm slightly pulling my scissors through the hair and closing just ever so slightly to remove that excess buildup in the hair. I think the one thing that we have to be focused on is there's kind of three ways to personalize a haircut. One, you can do it very visually and very freehand, kind of based on a feeling. Two, you can do it, work it more precise. Or three, you're kind of doing a combination of the first two. So, James, you got some love coming in from the family. I think uh, your kids, Oscar oh, yeah. and Roman, say hi, Daddy. Biggest you fans. Say hi to your, to your How children. you doing, Oscar? How you doing, Roman? Yep, they're watching. Love you guys. Uh, we've got uh, Laura Luciani watching. Says hi, James. Must be a friend. How you doing? We've got people watching from all over the world, which is wonderful. Let us know where you guys are watching from, uh, what part of this fabulous planet you're watching from. And, of course, if you have any questions... Uh, James is uh, part of the Davinez education team, and James and Alicia uh, make up what's called method education, which we want to hear a little bit about what method education is about. Uh, but now, I notice you're changing from working inside the scissor, what I normally call slicing, and then sometimes pointing. Um, do you use that same terminology, and, and how do you know when you want to do which, or how do you switch it up? Well, this is, this is the tough part. So if you get in close, as I go over the round of the head, I start to look for, you know, any light that's passing through the hair. And that's going to help me determine, one, where do I want the texturizing technique or the personalizing technique. So you're actually looking it. through the hair? I think I'm looking to see the balance see where of weight. it's dark and solid and where you want to that's create right. space. And why I'm switching from a slicing down here is I want to create a little bit more movement in through the perimeter. But as I get through above the round of the head, I want to remove a little bit more weight and have it lay a little bit. Now, do you always do this technique dry? Do you sometimes use these wet or these wet dry? Wet or dry, no. damp. Um, I've been experimenting a lot creating texture through combination of shapes, but I think it's really good to always revisit all the classic techniques and never get out of practice. And, and what about the choice of shear or scissor? I know there's a lot of questions. Do I need to use a dry cutting scissor? Is there something in particular that you're looking for? What do you recommend for hairdressers when they're working with these type of techniques, shear slash scissor wise? I mean, that's a great question. It's also a huge question, you know, because we're artists and artists use different brushes for different things. So I know some people who never go beyond a four and a half inch shear for all of their needs. I like to use multiple tools. Sometimes I use a five inch, sometimes I use a dry cutting shear, sometimes I use a texturizing shear. I love the answer because I feel the same way. It's very personal, you know? I, and it's funny, there are some people I know who can buy a $50 pair of scissors and feel that they love them, they get the results they want. And some people feel like they have to have the $2,000. It's very, very personal. It's kind of like jewelry, you know? It's like yeah. your, own, your own thing. So I love that. It's, uh, I, it's not dogmatic, it's very open-minded. All right, got, I want to give a shout out to Jack, Zach Schneider, longtime friend of Hairbrain, says watching from uh, the break room while color processes, best way to spend processing time. 
Thank you. We very much agree. Yeah, and if you guys feel the same way, just hit that little share button down in the corner. Maybe you have some other hairdresser friends that are uh, doing processing time on a Saturday. Uh, beautiful base color uh, says uh, Shannon Stillner, and we're going to get to we're going to be enhancing that today. Yeah. Alicia is going to come in and enhance that color soon. Um, it's Davines color existing already, and we can talk a little bit about the existing formula in just a moment. All right, so you're moving on to the opposite side, and I notice you're working with the natural parting. Does that affect your choice of how much weight you're going to take out here? Absolutely. So Marie, on her day-to-day, -day, how much work do you put into your hair, Marie, when you, Very little. when you style it? Very little, and I think that's what the majority of our clients do nowadays. And we have to take that in consideration because we may give them the best haircut in the salon with the best blow dry, but unless they can replicate it at home, it's not a very good haircut. And at the end of the day, that's, that's who determines your value or your clients. And I'm gonna speak uh, from experience here. Marie has a ton of hair, um, and James just did a great job of kind of pre-styling it, uh, flat ironing it. What, what did you use product-wise to get it like this? Because I've seen it looking well, really massive. Since we're doing color shortly here, uh, we just prepped it with the Day Day Spray, which is Davinez Leave-In Detangler. Um, it's also a great porosity equalizer. You know, she's got multiple tones and levels in here, and I think for the work that Alicia is going to be doing, it's important to have a nice canvas and the, leave her with a nice canvas. The Day Day is incredibly popular. I feel like every uh, Davinez educator we work with uses this on everything they do. It's like your prep spray, uh, but equalizes porosity and just a great light working spray. You know, this is one of those things like a leave-in conditioner, or, you know, even all-in-one milk, Sue. Um, these are all products that I think every client has to have. Everybody's lacking something in their hair. And, you know, that's a mandatory thing that all my clients go home with. It's going to be some sort of a leave-in, something that's going to give them what their hair needs. All right, a couple shout outs to our, uh, our viewers. Stephen Capelli is watching from Phoenix. Thank you for joining us. We've got Madre Durand all the way in from South Africa. Let us know where you're watching from. South Africa is pretty far away from New York City, so we're always interested to hear where people are watching from. Um, I think I had a couple other shout outs. We had um, Robin from British Columbia, Canada. James is a Canadian, right James? I am, I'm from British Columbia as well, Vancouver, just awesome. outside. Now, I know that you are uh, also part of the team here of Method Education, and we'll meet your partner in just a minute. Tell us a little bit about what that means, and then tell us exactly what you're doing there, because it looks like you're using a new technique. Yeah, so Method Education is something that um, was formed about four years ago, four or five years ago, and it was just to create a platform for you know, hairdressers to share knowledge. You know, and I never want my education for myself to be self-titled. Um, I think it needs to be about the education itself and not about my name or who I am. And so I'm looking for like-minded, and we were looking for like-minded hairdressers who share that same philosophy, morals, ethics. Um, and we go around and share, you know, what we love about hair and how we love to create um, shapes and styles and what works in the salon and what doesn't work in the salon. Myself, Alicia, um, we both are behind the chair every day of the week. Hey, Alicia. So I think it's a great time to introduce your partner in crime. Step in a little closer right here so Gordon can see you. Uh, this is Alicia. She just does the color in the method education team here. James is the cutting, so they're traveling around within the Davinez network. Uh, outside of Davinez network as well, or is it really purely just within Davinez? I mean, we love Davinez. So, yeah. I mean, it, we're, we're loyal to the soil. That's what I keep saying to Fantastic. Alicia. Now, Alicia, we've already had a few compliments about the existing color. Um, can you give us a little preview of what you're going to be doing when James is finished with the cut? Absolutely. So, what we're going to be doing today on Marie, she has a, a beautiful color already, but um, we, we'd love to take care of Marie because she handles all of the education with another amongst other girls that, that handle the education at Davina, so we love to be able to treat Marie to new color whenever we, we can. So what we want to do is really work with color melting today and uh, also to um, really just look at Marie's face and decide, uh, you know, what do we want to enhance or bring out. So today when we were doing a consultation with her, we decided that we want to add a little bit of depth in at the root. So we're going to go just a little bit darker at the root. 
and then we're going to melt in uh, from a level five down into a level six and then uh, all in the copper family and then we're also going to add a little bit more lightness uh, through the ends using um, progress which is our, our multi-purpose bleach and then also we're going to just bring up those little uh, money pieces that we love to see so much and those bright the brightness around our face to really open our face up as well so so now how do you guys work together as you know uh, many people obviously do both cut and color um, and some people specialize so it's like you guys are specializing so how do you communicate to each other and um, James why don't you start first telling us this technique that you're doing because we've been watching it for a few minutes and people really want to know and then talk about how you how you work together sure um, this is called, well, I call it back cutting. You might have a different name for it. I call it back cutting as well. Um, and there's two kind of ways that you can go about it. So first I'm working really visually. I'm feeling the weight in my hands and where I want to remove excess weight. She's got really curly hair with lots of movement. So I'm, I've seen it air dried. And what I'm trying to do is create a, lit, a lot more movement in through the back here once she lets it dry. So I was coming from underneath and what that's going to do for me is build volume in, I'll do a little bit here, build volume from the underneath and creating the hair to build out in through this way. There's a lot of weight already sitting in through here from the previous haircut. So we're just gonna try and balance out that shape from a profile perspective so everything has a little bit more harmony. The second way you can do that is from the top. And now I can see the weight line, this area. So we're gonna work through the top vertically and we're going to back cut down into my section. So that's going to help flatten that area out. That's been a little bit of, um, I don't know, wouldn't even call it an issue, but just an area of concern um, as it's getting longer. Great technique, very versatile. Nice to see that just by changing the direction of the scissor, you can change the effect to getting those little micro cuts along the surface. 100%. And you have to be able to, the, the tension has to be light enough that the hair slips away as you're cutting, is that right? I mean, it's a combination of everything. So yeah. just so you can see the tension, like I can just pull it right out of my finger without right. any resistance, but it's also how much you're cutting with your scissor and how much you're pulling. So it's almost like a pull cut, pull cut, but I'm really working with just the triangular section in through yeah. there. And it's, you know, I, I kind of compare it to scissor over comb. Your hand moves, your scissors move, and it's a full movement of, you know, all the mechanics working together. Awesome. So, you know, when cutting this way, how do you know when you've taken enough out? You know, mm -hmm. is, it, is it just purely visual? Is there some, something that you look for? Because I think, again, people can perhaps over overdo it or underdo it and not really 100%. be totally sure of what they want to achieve. So what I work, look for is the shape. I make sure that I'm maintaining the shape that I've spent all that time putting in or that you're putting in. So you, you have to be careful not to get confused with existing color in through here that can visually change what you're seeing or how the light is doing it, but always being aware of what your shape is, is becoming. All right, so over texturizing is a huge. Yeah, it happens a lot, and you know, I think people just like oh, like looking at themselves in the mirror, how cool it looks to be like chopping into the hair, or just you know like you've seen it, and maybe you kind of get the technique down, but you don't really see what it's doing to the hair. So keeping your eyes wide open, that's a good show. I'm gonna turn a little bit more here, and maybe we're gonna bring the camera in just a little bit closer so that we can really see that technique. Uh, a lot of love coming in for you guys. You have a lot of friends watching. Um, and we hear, so we've got Kim Carter saying, hi, James. Kim. Lots of love from the South. Mm -hmm. And then I think it was Kim also let us in on a little secret that tomorrow is a, is a birthday. We've got a birthday right. girl here. Thank Alicia's you. birthday tomorrow. Congratulations. Happy birthday, Alicia. What are you going to be doing for your birthday? Teaching color profiling. With awesome. James tomorrow. That's, That's right. To a group of... 16. Well, hopefully that group will have you come and celebrate a little bit afterwards. Kim Carter is my business partner. We own a salon together. Oh, awesome. Where's your salon? Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, so Kim and I opened a Davin exclusive salon in March. So we're in Little Rock, Arkansas in a little little community called Hillcrest right in the middle of the city. And um, we love our community. We love our, our group of 13 girls and one, Stephen. So... You know what? I have it's been to almost every state in the country except for Arkansas. It's time. I still have never been it's to time. Arkansas. It's beautiful there. Yeah. It's it a beautiful, beautiful part of the country. All right, James. So it looks like you've, you're moving on again. So you've done your back cutting. 
And it looks like you're coming around the front. So tell us what you're looking for. So what I'm looking for now is balance and weight. And seeing, you know, I pointed out that there was a really heavy section in through here. And you can still see that there's a little bit of weakness, you know, pre-existing in through here and in through here. So I'm just trying to even that weight distribution up without removing that back like that. Because bringing that all the way back kind of automatically dates the haircut. It's going to look a bit bi-level. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just now I'm just looking for, you know, negative space in through here. And you can see there's a tiny bit in through there that I keep going back to. So I'm just going to cut into that. And I think we're almost done there in, in that front bit. And then you had asked how Alicia and myself work together. Yes, that was the big question that we then got sidetracked. So, uh, you know, in terms of consultation and making sure you're both like on the same page. Hmm. I mean... I call her every morning on the way to my salon and and discuss every haircut that you're going to be doing. <laughs> we just we just talk because I think about I think a lot about being a strong team is you know knowing that other person mm -hmm. and being able to work together and knowing you know thought process and how you feel about you know things that are going on in the world. That's where the strength comes from. You know I'm confident in her skill that I don't need to necessarily coach her on on what needs to be done, but I think because we work so far away and we don't get to work with each other every single day, it's important that you have that connection. Um, and then what we do is we just start, you know, you know what I was thinking about this morning at the gym? And, you know, we just talk further and, you know, we leave, give each other homework to do for the day and we meet up again on the next phone call. And I think it's been really successful and the more we get to work together, I think the stronger we become. And, um, you know, she's a great asset to Method Education. She's a huge asset to Davines North America. And she's, you know, a great, you know, lady boss and who empowers other women. And I think that's something that we always have to, you know, continue to encourage other hairdressers. You know, women supporting women, men supporting men, hairdressers supporting hairdressers. Everybody um, supporting everybody. Everyone that's supporting everybody. Really. Keep this world uh, sustainable. It's a big part of uh, beauty and sustainability from Davides. So I'm pretty much done with kind of the texturizing. I'm going to say stop here. Um, once the color's done, I can always come back and check it out and see if I need to add anything. But my shape is still maintained in through this area. And that's what you want to be careful for because over texturizing, it would just become so flat. And now, yeah, the hair does anything, but you've lost your shape. And it doesn't really have a style. And I think it's important that we, we remember that, you know, we have to cut from here, from our brains, and not just from our shears. And that's where we can over-texturize. Yeah, and I think that's what happens a lot with these kind of freehand techniques. Yeah. It's like so physical to do, and people get like into the action of it. And I've seen... Very often, people just get into that and they're just not looking at the hair. You know, they're 100%. looking at their hands and their fingers. So, great tips there. Listen to your heart and listen to your mind. And trust your eyes. And trust Keep your eyes. Keep them wide open. All right, so we've had a lot of love coming in for, for both of you guys and for Marie. Everyone's so happy to see your long hair. I was saying the same thing. I hadn't seen Marie in a while and I was like, wait, whoa, what happened there? Um, we're moving on to color now shortly. There's been a lot of love for the existing color. But Marie is going to enhance it and talk about, you know, we've got some roots coming in. She's going to be doing some fun stuff with Flamboyage, which if you guys haven't seen this before, you want to check it out. It's a very, very special kind of mesh highlighting fabric material that's got a stickiness to it. You can do incredible things that you can't do with regular foil. So we're going to get to see some Flamboyage and some great color application. We're going to learn about some of the different families of color from Davines. So Alicia, let's get in here and let's talk color. All right, so first we're going to do a bit of sectioning with Marie, and it's a simple section. We're going to take uh, essentially a teardrop section on the top, and that's it. And then I'm going to section away um, the back, and I'm going to color it a bit later because no one wants to watch me do a, an all-over root application. So I'm going to take a teardrop section from the apex to the high recession. So why, a ch why this choice in particular? Yeah. I, I love a teardrop because I love the movement that it gives whenever the color falls because it creates softness because we're working on more of a round edge um, and, and not 
just an absolutely straight triangle. Nothing wrong with either one. Um, but James, can you tell me if that looks balanced to you? So getting it balanced teardrop, and once you get that in, we'll have uh, Marie put her chin down so we can see exactly what's happening here. Absolutely. Uh, so there you go. Put your chin down, Marie, and you can see. So coming back to a point and coming around. Mm -hmm. And in this area, you're going to work with some flamboyage? I am going to work um, with some flamboyage, uh, and we're going to use it a bit more unconventionally. Ooh, I like that. So we're not going to be using it in the, the traditional way, which was... Um, really playing, placing it on top of the hair and then peeling it up, we're actually going to use it as if it were um, essentially like a sticky foil. So it's just going to hold the color in place for us. Now, um, this flamboyage, let's get a closer look here. Uh, James is holding. These are the long flamboyage. There's like a paper and then there's like a, a contact paper, I think is what Christopher Bowden said, like a sticky on one side mm -hmm. paper here. Um, and I, I think when it was designed to use in several different ways, we've seen some over the years in different HP lives. Um, and the classic way is you kind of like peel it apart, right? right? Peel it apart, and um, then it naturally creates a back comb uh, at the root. And then whenever you peel it up, it isn't able to create any sort of pattern. Um, Which is really kind of interesting amazing. and amazing. And we've got plenty of videos showing that. And we're going to be doing a big Davines color tour over the next two months where we'll be showing lots of that. But now today you're using it in a non-conventional way. Yes. Let's talk about what that is. So today we're going to use it um, essentially as kind of a combination between, I would say, a board and a foil. Um, but a board that's going to stay in place. So it's going to give us just a bit more structure. So you put your teardrop in and then it looks like you're coming mm -hmm. kind of diagonally? Will it be almost like herringbone it kind is. of? It's yeah. going to be... Um, look at that, I read your mind. Yes, look at that. I've done this one too twice. love a Yeah. Um, what I'm going to do... I used to wear a nice gold one when I was a kid. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm going to do is just place this onto the flamboyage to just give me a starting point. So the hair actually sticks to it, unlike foil. So you don't have to hold it. And, and now you're combing it even tighter and mm -hmm. flatter. So that way I get a nice, nice working surface. So you can do so many things with that now once it's, it's in so there. Versatile. I mean, you could paint a zigzag on it. You could do and anything do. you want. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to bring in the color. And then just tell me if we're good here. And I'm going to start working with all three different colors onto this one, um, one section. And then I'm going to begin laying all of the other sections on top of it. Now, I know everyone's going to start asking. Yes. Um, and these flamboyage strips, they are available at hairbrain.pro. So that's our pro store. If you love the education that we've been sharing with you um, and you want to try these out, an easy way to do it is just go to www.hairbrain.pro and you can order your flamboyage strips and try them out. I'll also type it in here for you. Uh, we partnered with Davinez to help as many hair colorists experience these as possible. If you are in a Davines salon, you can get them through your local distributor as well. But even if you're not in a Davines salon and you want to try flamboyage, we'd encourage you to check out hairbrain.pro. All right, so now I'm taking my next section, the same diagonal, and I'm going to lay it down directly on top of the hair that I've already placed on the flamboyage mesh. I'm working with a level five, uh, at Marie's root, and it's a combination of uh, five comma zero, which is a five natural, and five comma four, which is a five copper. And then I also added a bit of six comma four four, which is a level six copper copper. Okay, so right now you're talking about um, color that comes from mask with vibrochrome. Correct. So that is this is basically Davinez's. Uh, uh, full coverage range. Yes. Yeah. It's our permanent, permanent. color line. Um, absolutely. It's uh, we reformulated it about two and a half years ago now, I believe, mm -hmm. and it is absolutely. What I love about it is that the color palette is so modern. Um, so whenever we're putting color on the hair, I don't feel like it's it looks cosmetic or it looks like something that couldn't be achieved in nature. Uh, and I, I really appreciate that about about Davinus that it is such a classy color and such an expanded color palette and modern palette. Now, I know you're also working with the, a lightener, and this one is the Progress from the Century of Light line. And this is something that was launched about a year ago. It's a three different lighteners or bleaches. I know that's not the 
term that we like to use, but most people call it a bleach. We don't mind. Uh, it's a lightener, and this one in particular is this. This is designed for highlighting, or tell us about Progress. Yeah, Progress is our multi-purpose bleach. It's lilac in color, which I love to see it processing. Um, and then it, it's really, I mean, it can be used for so much. It can be used in a foil. It can be used in a flamboyage mesh. Um, it's not an open air bleach. We have Liberty, which is our clay lightener that we would use um, for, for open air balayage type colors. Um, but this is just my go-to. We, I mean, the girls at the salon, we go through, I mean, so much progress because it's our, one of our absolute favorites. Benji Jones is asking about the flamboyage strips. Uh, can they be folded? They absolutely can be folded. They can be folded. They, they like can, stick on themselves. They stick yeah. on themselves. Also, if you want to use multiple colors on one and you need to get the section out of the way, you can also roll them. Um, and then use like pin curl clips. Like literally roll it up like and a little circle, mm -hmm. yeah, like a cigar, like or a maybe cigar. not a cigar. Or maybe not a cigar. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can roll them up, um, and then you can use multiple colors in, in one and, and keep it nice and tight and out of the way. Lots of love. I want to give a shout out to my brother, Chris Ray. He's watching in between clients and then headed back. Hi. And guys, uh, what we always do with color is we let it process and get some photos and then we put them up in the feed yes. so that you'll be able to see this finished process afterwards because you couldn't necessarily sit for 40 minutes while it processes. So after the application, Alicia will walk you through the process and what needs to be looked for. Then we'll process it and send you some photos here in the feed. Lots of love coming in from everywhere. Solo says thank you all. George Alderete is watching, our good friend and colorist. Benji Jones says, cool, thanks for letting him know about the folding of the strips. Um, I do want to make a quick note. Our friend um, Zach Schneider was asking about the Hairbrain Futurecast event, mm -hmm. which is exciting. Uh, it's going to be a first-of-its-kind event, like many of the things we've done at Hairbrain. It's a first-of-its-kind industry kind of podcast live event. These things happen in a lot of industries where you get top podcasters together in a live theater and they do their interviews and discussions in front of the audience. So that's what's going to be happening in um, March 20th of 2020. Yeah, 2020. We'll be in Chicago. We've got five or six of the industry's top podcasters lined up for the day. They've got great guests and great topics. Um, and then we'll have some keynote speakers throughout the day. I think I'll be doing a little little presentation myself. So that sounds great. Yeah, it's, it, it's really about the future of the industry. Um, getting together a few dozen thought leaders on one stage to talk about topics about you know business models and product and distribution and how to be successful behind the chair in 2020 and beyond. So that's why it's called Futurecast and keep your eyes peeled for more and more details for the tickets that will be. It'll only be a, a small amount of tickets available because it's an intimate environment so keep your eyes peeled. All right let's get back to this beautiful flamboyage technique and just don't spare us any expense. You right. really explained the whole thing. So I'm working my way up through the section. I placed a second flamboyage mesh uh, just so that it would give us a little bit more of space to work on when I'm laying this color on top of it. Um, now I'm still using the base color, which is um, going to be a level five copper. Uh, and then I'm laying right on top of it uh, the six comma four four, which is the six copper copper. And I'm using 20 volume with it, so this is the 6,44. And I'm really working on my saturation. And again, we're all about color melting. And that's what this um, particular hair brand is going to be about. So we're working with color melting and really working these colors together. So when you say color melting, I mean, this is a term we hear a lot. Yeah. Especially more and more recently. Absolutely. What does it mean to you exactly, color melting? I love a seamless color. Um, I don't particularly, when I'm working on my clients at home, I don't love to see where a highlight starts when I'm working more, more commercially. I like to really see um, a lot of diffusion and a lot of blend uh, so that, um, you know, it's, it's just really soft and polished. Um, that's really when I'm working with, with clients especially. I like that aesthetic. And, Sometimes people will do like back combing mm -hmm. and with color melting. Is that something you ever do? Absolutely. Tomorrow's class that we're teaching color profiling is all about back combing or chatouching uh, and coloring uh, the hair that way. So wait, what was that last word? Chatouche. Okay, I haven't heard that one before. Can we hear? Can we hear a little more? Chatouche. Tell us about your class tomorrow. 
Um, what, what will the learners expect? Uh, what will we be sharing? And tell us what chatouching is. It makes me hungry. It sounds like uh, <laughs> it does sound like some food Mediterranean food. Uh, yeah. So tomorrow's class, and I'll, James, please chime in uh, as you as you like. But James, actually, would you like to yeah. talk a bit about where we, you know, how we came up with? Yeah, with color profiling. That's, that's, that's been a, around for a bit. That's been around for a bit. Um, well, color profiling, like all of our classes, we, you know, because we work in the salon, I'm always looking to see what's missing within my own environment. Mm -hmm. And I'm of the mindset, if it's missing in my life or missing in, in the salon that I'm at, then it has to be missing somewhere else in the industry. Right. And so color profiling was created as a cut and color combo class um, where we focus on not only how to identify and cut for face shape, but also how to identify and color for the face shape. And I think so many of us through you know, our apprenticeships or academies that we attended, you know, we learned a lot about the face shape and how to put a haircut on it, but I don't think the right respect has been given over time onto how to put the right color on the face shape. What does light do? What does dark do? What happens if we put the dark here visually? Because as hairdressers, we're illusionists. And you know everything that we do in combination from the cut to the color is going to affect the way this person sees themselves or the way this person portrays. And what we really want to achieve from color profiling is get away from people saying, that's a great color. And we get them saying, that's a great color for you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was one for me. I always bring this story up as one of my earliest lessons when um, I was a young stylist. I was like on Fifth Avenue and Manhattan, and I just trained at Sassoon, and I learned all these great haircuts. And I thought, you know, it was all about cutting hair, um, and like the haircut was almost like a hat. And that's just my perception. That's not the way I was trained. But I had a client who was a fashion editor, and the first thing she said when she sat down, she said, "When." I walk into the room, I want people to notice me, not my hair. And that's when it really hit me that, you know, it's great to design haircuts, but it's more important of how it looks on the person. Yeah. Sounds like that's what you guys are working on, and I love that. Absolutely. All right, let's get back in here. Lots of people are just joining us. If you're just joining us, I'm Gerard Scorpacey. We're here in New York City doing another one of our ongoing series of educational videos for our friends and partners, Davinez. We are featuring today the method education team of Alicia and James, and uh, they're in town doing a, a hands-on class here in New York. Now, we did have some question about the progress. What is the, Christopher Bowden was wondering what level of developer are you using with progress? Absolutely, hi uh, Christopher. Just progress so people can see what we're talking about. So Christopher, I'm using 20 volume with progress and I've mixed it one part progress to two parts 20 volume. Now, with, with this, you, you choose the ratio? You do. It's yeah. an open mixing ratio, which is really nice because it works well with different climates. And so um, you can mix it in So the developer room. and the uh, lightener are in an open relationship? They are. Yeah, so they Entirely. Can, yeah, okay, good to know. Absolutely. Okay. Um, and it can be mixed one to one and a half or one to two and a half, so it's really nice for, okay. for those colors who have a preference on and the like, consistency. And why would you choose you know, one over the other? You know, I like when I'm working in foils or in this um, same scenario with the, the flamboyage, I really like to use it just a bit thicker because it keeps my foils in place. Mm. So I'm able to really work within the foil and work on blending or anything that I need to do within the foil and it really sticks to it. Excellent. Now, I, I feel, and I've said this a lot recently because we've done so many Davines Color uh, lives, that the the line of Davines Color now is like fully, fully it developed. Is. I mean, you know, at, at one point, just like most companies, there was just like the permanent color, sure. and then there was like some non-ammonia, and this, now you've got everything. You've got these three different lighteners, and I know probably one of the most exciting things, and I don't know if this is something you're using today, maybe yes. afterwards, is uh, is the new view from Davines. How's that working out for you? Is it something super, how, how's the network responding? The network has been really amazing, and I, it is, it's outstanding. Um, I think just like what you said, Gerard, it, it really completed the Davinus line and the Davinus family of color. So we really truly have everything that we need uh, to accomplish what looks we're going for. Again, the color palette is so nice. It's so modern. Um, the reflex are really amazing and there's not one client that I don't put it on that's, that's getting color. Yeah, the shine uh, Christopher Bo Bowen is pointing out is, uh, is super, super high impact on the view mm -hmm. color, yep. 
I just want to jump in and add something about the view. I mean, we, we were so happy to bring it into our salon. And, you know, for years we've been trying to work with what we had to create the, the toner right. that, that we wanted. And, you know, really I think view makes you a better colorist. It does. Really. 100%. Finally, there's a product that goes from your mind to the finished product. And, you know, the shine, the quality... And the tonalities that they provide are, are makes it all achievable. Makes it all achievable. Yeah. Robin Bickner is wondering if you're thinking about any type of toner here for the lightened ends. Is it something you've already planned out, or do you think maybe it won't need a toner? We definitely will see. Um, I, we brought the view that Gerard just showed, eight comma four four, and ten volume. That's the dedicated activator for view. And we also brought finest pigments, which is. Um, a great tool. It's been around with Davinus for a long time. Um, and Finest Pigments is a temporary, true temporary color. And so we brought that in gold because we just decided that we'd see what. So, in pre, pre planning anything. your palette, you were thinking Absolutely. ahead in these. So, yes, you were thinking. But if you don't have to tone, then you won't. Yeah. 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 Well, definitely. Um, you so, know, how do you determine when you on. need to tone and when you don't need to tone? I don't love to see bleach in its raw state. I like to, to seal it down with, um, you know, a demi-permanent or a temporary color. You just think it makes the hair cuticle look better? I do. Yeah. yeah. So and you I, I tone most of the time? I do tone most of the time, and I think that um, if we have a tool that is going to make our hair color even more shiny than what it already is within the Mask with Fiber Chrome family, why not do it? Um, and just add a little bit of reflect and, and just more customization to the color. So, changing topics a little bit. Now, I know you opened a salon, and mm -hmm. what's the name of your salon? Carter Miller Hillcrest. Carter Miller Hillcrest. Mm -hmm. That's very, very posh. Very yeah. distinguished. Very posh. <laughs> and um, you're in Little Rock, Arkansas. Yes. And how would you price something like this? So, in a real, sounds like a real salon, yeah. a real town in America, and very similar to a lot of, I'm sure it's a, one of the best salons in town. But how would we you have, price something thank like you. this? Yeah, you know, I would price it by how much time it takes me and how much color also that I'm that I'm using. So, uh, and also the you know it it takes it's not it looks simple, um, but placement is key and really learning and practicing. So, you know, for me, I think I would charge typically by the hour um, about how much it would take. And so, um, you know, I would say it's probably around a two hundred dollar mm -hmm. color for her. You know, I, I, I get to ask that question to a lot of people, yeah. colorists all over the world, and, and the one common thing that I find is that it's about the wow factor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, um, obviously you're putting your time and your work, but in the end, if you put in a lot of time and work and it just looks, there's no one says yeah. wow, then it's kind of hard to charge more. Charge that, if yeah. you're getting a wow factor with your color by being dimensional and melting and Absolutely. using product, I mean, everyone, they're still commenting on how beautiful the red is. It's beautiful. So if no one says, wow, your red is beautiful, then you're not going to feel too good paying extra money for it. But if you're getting compliments constantly and you know you pay a little bit more, then, you know, so right. that's, that's kind of what it comes back, yeah. comes back to, you know? Absolutely. The wow factor. All right, so for everyone that's just joining us, walk us all the way through this application. Tell us what these fun little strips are. For sure. Okay, so we started with a pear shape um, section on the top of Marie's head, and then we brought the widest part of the pear to um, the high recession. And then we're just taking a diagonal uh, as far as sectioning. We've taken a diagonal all the way across uh, the section. Marie flips her hair back and forth, so we wanted to give her a color that she would still get brightness and light, um, whichever way she, she flips uh, her so hair. So the section is going to go diagonally all the way across all the, the way across you're done. the section. And the idea then with the melting is she'll have one effect this right. way and, and a little bit differently way. on the other. And there's your wow factor right there, yes. too, because and people will be like, wow, it looks different today right. from yesterday. Or so if she's feeling a little brighter one day and wants to have more lightness, great. And, you know, she can really complement what she's wearing or her makeup. So um, based talk on to me a little bit style. about about how you're um, kind of blending and, and painting over. How does that work? I am such a fan of back brushing when I blend. Mm -hmm. um, typically I'll use um, a, clean, a clean brush and dry brush it up, but today I'm just keeping one side of my brush a bit cleaner uh, and I'm just 
holding the end of the flamboyage mesh and that's what I love about these is that I can hold the end so I have a bit more structure to work with and really push the lightness up. And how will it how will it interact with the color that's underneath it? You know it's really nice actually as it goes over uh, the top of the color it will lift through the color a bit but it'll stay on tone as it does it and then of course in the end we're going to blend a bit um, with with either progress I'm sorry with either view or finest pigments whichever we we choose at the end, um, but they're they're going to sit really nicely right next to each other. And what the importance of the diagonal sectioning? That's so that it'll it'll kind of shift from side to side easily. Mm -hmm. And just have, add more dimension and more right. softness to the color, so there's not going to be any any real lines because that's really what we wanted to stay away from. As I'm placing the lightener, I'm working it up um, higher the closer I get. So as we finish, we should have. A, really a diagonal going across. So the application of the lightener keeps getting higher? It's getting higher because okay. I want her to have that really soft um, bit of blonde around her face that's more of a melted color and less of a highlight. A lot of thought is going into this, yeah, you know? Yeah, definitely. I think that's where we've gotten with color. I mean, I think a beautiful technical highlight that, you know, maybe 10 years ago was the the top thing you could do yeah. was a little bit mechanical. Definitely. Uh, I mean, it could be, I'm not even taking away from it because then I, no, you know, I love mechanical. Not. But color's gotten a little bit more organic and a little bit, you know, more thoughtful yeah. in a way rather than just mechanical. I definitely yeah. think so. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we really, we really love customized color and not doing the same thing and, and really getting in into a run of asking your client the same thing as last time every time they walk through the door. So. You know, Mandy Bristow is just joining us as are I'm sure a lot of people. Um, can we get a shot of each one of these um, bowls Absolutely. and you can tell us what's in it? So this first one, I know that's progress. First one is progress in 20 volume. And the second one? The second is six comma four four, six copper copper with uh, 20 volume also. Uh, the third bowl is 10 grams of, I'm sorry, 20 grams of five comma zero, which is a five natural. 30 grams of five comma four, which is a five copper. And five grams of six comma four four. And these are all from the Davines color line. The permanent color is these last two formulas are mask with vibrochrome. Yes. And then the lightener or bleach is from Century of Light Progress. Okay. So again, if you're just joining us and wondering, and now let's talk about how you're applying each one. So I'm um, going in, I'm actually gonna add one more flamboyage mesh, James, if you don't mind to hand it to me. Yourself. Let's, I would love to yeah, do let's see this. Can you walk us through, the, show everyone yes, that's just joining? Yes, definitely. So this is the flamboyage mesh, and it just peels right off of uh, this white piece of paper. The white paper, definitely save. You can use it if you like to uh, paper highlights. Um, you can also use it um, to cover the color at the end when you're going over the top of it. So you can go right over the top of this and lay uh, to protect it while it processes. So I'm starting at the base of Marie's hair. And I'm putting my first color about two, two and a half inches out from Marie's base. Marie, will you look down for me, Smitch? Thanks. You know what, what I'm just, it's occurring to me is the way that you're doing this, you're able to color it in natural fall. Yes. As opposed to like highlights Absolutely. that are elevated. Mm -hmm. So as you're painting, you know exactly how it's going to, so that was my aha moment exactly then. Exactly yeah. how it's going to fall um, because I can see absolutely what's going to happen because we're going with the direction of the way Marie's hair grows. Um, Jay uh, Ella Godin is also wondering about, you know, just painting color over color. Mm -hmm. how, you know, will it process evenly? And just explain how, how that can work. Because I think a lot of people would be nervous to put a color no, over definitely. color and bleach over color. So because this is a color line, because Mask with Vibrochrome is a color line that is an indirect dye, meaning that it develops with inside the hair cuticle, it's no problem to lay them right on top of each other. Uh, so I'm laying them right next to each other so that they naturally diffuse together, but because there's no, you know, there's no direct dyes that are competing with each other, it's all gonna develop with inside. I have to be honest, I'm, I'm strangely getting hungry. The colors <laughs> are, the colors of the product, I'm thinking like that like one's a like, like, looks a little bit like, uh, yeah, frosting and, you know, uh, and I, I also, and, I, and I, I'm always honest about this, there's no awful smell in the yeah, room. No. There's no, like, hard chemical smell whatsoever, mm -hmm. which is important. And I know Davinez, mm -hmm. um, 
one of their first mandates is sustainability and working with as much natural product as possible. And I know that they consider that when they develop the colors. So I don't smell anything. So I'm hoping that, uh, yeah. you know, that <laughs> we that, like that. that's a good thing. So I just used another mesh and I used it um, sticky side down just to protect the hair on Marie's head um, that I don't want to color on that I'm going to go back in afterwards and fold this all up. So yeah, I mean, it might be a little hard to see, but she's literally got like a little wall mm -hmm. here that she's created. Little wall of flamboyage. And if you're interested in those flamboyage strips, I mean, there's actually quite a lot of different ways to use them. And over the next six weeks or so, we're going to be doing a lot of Facebook lives with Davines colorists all over the country and actually up into Canada who won a contest. Yeah, we were and, talking and, about yeah, that this morning. We were just talking yeah. this morning. Yeah, so, and I've encouraged all of them to be very creative with flamboyage because I think this is a really fun thing and I think it's a great way to add that wow factor of the experience because Definitely. most clients haven't had it and they can say, well, what is this? Why, why yeah. is it different? So if you do something a little bit differently on a guest or a client, and they get the compliments and the wow factor, they're gonna think back to the flamboyage, they're gonna think back to the technique, they're gonna think about you, yeah? yeah? If it's always been done the same way, maybe it's time to shake it up, and right. that's a good, and a these different. can be used in a very simple, there's a lot of different ways to use them, so hopefully we'll see a lot of that over the next six or eight weeks. Yeah. So just continuing on with Marie's base color, just gonna work quickly through the rest of this top section. Marie, how are you feeling under there? Oh, it's fine, it's good. <laughs> good. Yeah. Relaxing. Yeah, I've got my wall with my Yeah. So we'll pin this up out of Marie's face, we'll fold it once she starts processing. You'll literally take the whole thing literally up. Literally take the whole yeah. thing up and just fold it right there. Now how thick are these sections as you work across? So I'm working about, uh, I'd say an eighth of an inch section, maybe a quarter of an inch. Um, and so that's pretty fine. Yeah, yeah, definitely pretty fine. And that's um, because you want like saturation? Yes, I want to be able to saturate through it because another thing that I love about the way that I'm doing the color right now is that I'm not wearing gloves because I'm not touching the color. Mm. So my hands are clean. Oh, I just noticed that. Mm -hmm. And normally people are like, why are you not wearing gloves? Right. Why are you not wearing gloves? But your hands are spotless. But my hands yeah. aren't going to be dirty because I'm taking the section right down on top of it. So there's no need to wear them right now. Now, of course, when I rinse and all of that and tone, I'll, I'll be wearing them. But um, right now, it's it's not necessary and it's nice and clean. James Alba is wondering if um, Hi, James. Mary holds the record for the most model appearances on HB. I would, I would say so, probably. <laughs> as well as every other event in the, in the industry. <laughs> it's great when your employees look like models, I was right? going to yeah. say, it helps when everyone yeah. in the office looks like a model. Yeah. And then I get my hair done. And then you yeah. get your hair done. Give a shout out. We got Shane Johnson just joined us. Our friend Pascalan Gianello from Old School Sassoon. Great to have you here and big supporters of what you guys do there, keeping the uh, tradition of Sassoon cutting alive. We're all friends and fans of that. Mandy Bristow is here. Ashley Swain loves the formulas. Hi, Ashley. Uh, great job. Is she a friend of yours? She's or? one of the girls that works at my salon. Okay. Ming Chu Tan says hello. Aloha from Austin, Texas. Austin's one of the stops we'll be making on our Davines color tour, so hopefully you'll come out uh, and see us. And actually, I'll be putting up you know all the um, cities that we'll be in, and we're inviting all hairdressers to come into the lives. Uh, nice. Davines or not Davines, we want to get everyone together for a meetup while we do these lives, and just bring the local communities of hairdressers together. Um, again, guys, if you have any questions, there's some great technical education happening here. I think very practical and also very interesting and that's a great balance because this is salon work that's got a wow factor to it and I love that. So if you have any questions about the product or about the application or about taking classes with these guys, um, yeah. they've got some exciting stuff. What do you have now? I know you've got a class tomorrow. What do you have throughout the rest of the year? James, you want to come in and tell us about that? Yeah, we're, I mean, method education focuses everywhere from, you know, essential shapes to essential disconnection about what we're finding a lot of success with is, you know, these one day programs that are salon friendly but push the boundaries a little bit so on Monday we're actually teaching another class called transcend and that's you know taking taking inspiration from the runways or from industry magazines and how do we translate that into so something that's um, commercially friendly but pushes the boundaries mm -hmm. for, for for you and your clients um, and then the, the practical work is focused on 
essential disconnection. So understanding how to problem solve through hair cutting and then the color work in combination with the cut, creating something that transcends, you know, from one world to the next. Um, we're also really, you know, I watched your hair brain live the other day with the, with the amber uh, oh, yes. mannequin because this is now on our order list. Because yeah, we, definitely. We've created a really cool curl class called Tamed. And, you know, truly, I think we've created a color, a coloring technique for curly hair that's never been done before. Oh, we want to see that. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, I mean, DavinezPro.com, check it out. Talk to your local distributor. We've, we've run the class about eight times, about 16 to 20 people, and none of them had ever seen that color technique before. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist. True. That just means it's new to you know what we're doing yeah um so we invite you guys to create the demand for that and we'd be happy to share it with you and and um yeah and check out that amber mannequin it's really yeah incredible. it looks great it's yeah great. i saw it and i said marie let's add this to yeah. the list and then when i saw you cutting with it i was i was super pumped um yeah and what's what's situation Shatushin oh yeah, we didn't we didn't get to Shatushin. Yeah. Shatushin Another reason is... why I'm hungry. I'm thinking it comes with a falafel, <laughs> yeah, <I'm hungry. laughs> maybe some pita bread. Shatushin is back combing. Just that, a fancy way to is say it. Is that something you made up, or is that no, just something I don't know it's about? It's not something that I made up, but uh, no. But it's uh, so like they call it teasing or lacing, right? Or absolutely. Shatushin. Or shatushin. I I I thought I've heard it all, but you know, there's always something new to hear. Where does that come from? Any idea? Um, I believe it's French. Don't hate me all Perhaps. I've typically only heard the southern people talk okay. about Has that. anyone ever heard of that term? <laughs> uh, Shatushing for backcombing or teasing? Or is it just me who's never heard of it? I don't know. And I could be totally wrong on that. Yeah. All my French friends and... Uh, Danny Ben says hi. Oh, hi, oh, Danny. Alicia and James. Danny's a Davina salon owner at outside of West Palm Beach. You know, our viewers are always very anxious to see the end result, but what happens here is hair color has to process. Yes. So the color will, once this application is done, we're going to take a break uh, because Alicia has to finish her application through the bottom, um, and then it will be processed for, I would imagine, 30 to 40 minutes mm -hmm. or something like that. And then we will post photos back here in the feed. So all you have to do is come back. And you can see what it looks like. Absolutely. Unfortunately, we wish color could just do that. We do. But here, we're here to educate hairdressers, so it's about learning and seeing the process, and then the end result we put up here so that you can you can see the wow factor. So just keep your eyes peeled for that. All right. So it looks like you're getting into the last few yeah, sections. Last bit. Uh, and our friend Dalby Markham is just joining, and she's wondering if you could recap. And this sounds like a perfect time to do it. Hi, Dalby. Hope you're well. Uh, yeah, so what we've done is we are just enhancing what Marie uh, was already working with. We wanted to take into account that uh, Marie has was beautiful, uh, and we wanted to give her a little more depth at the roots, so we're going a little bit darker uh, with a level 5 copper, and Dali will put the uh, formula in the comments for sure. Uh, and then we're using a color melting technique and going in with a level 6 copper on the mids and then on the ends we are um, blending in progress and 20 volume and bringing it up at a diagonal so that it's really going to open up Marie's face whenever it's styled out. And again to see the complete finished result just come back in about an hour or so and look through the comments and we'll have it posted in the feed there. Uh, again we wish that things could just process immediately but as hairdressers we know it takes a little bit of time and we just really want to teach you the application and this has been a beautiful interesting application with a lot of wow factor uh, so I think you guys should really if you missed it or you're just joining now a great thing to know is that with these hair brain lives once they're finished they live on our page forever under the video tab and you can watch, you can fast forward, you can rewind, you can watch things over and over again. What a great uh, library of videos. There's probably over 450 of these live step-by-steps with real hairdressers just like you sharing their, sharing their technique, sharing their craft. So I really encourage you to check that out. All right, Al Alicia? Yeah, I think we're wrapping up. Just going to do this last probably four sections with Marie and um, really melt our color, get a little bit more lightness through the ends there. And then I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna do her the rest of the color using the level five formula at the root and the six formula on the mids and ends. 
and then James is going to finish her out. So yeah, can I talk a little bit about yeah, the color? When we, were, when we were talking about the color that we were going to do on Marie, is we were talking about, you know, light versus dark, light mm -hmm. expanding, dark receding. And so if you can see underneath here, sorry, uh, Lisha, but you can see. Oh, there is a person how, under there. Hi! Hi, Marie. Hi, how Marie. it transitions from the dark into the light. And then on the top surface, mm -hmm. it's actually getting more lightness Growing. to darkness in through here. Mm -hmm. So you've got this multidimensional color from many ways. So how do we see it from the profile? Well, Marie is a beautiful girl and a beautiful woman. And, and, you know, there's not much that we were thinking like, okay, we have to draw attention here or expand this area. But what we're going to see from the underneath is as she runs her hands through her hair, mm -hmm. she's going to get this nice frame of dark under, underneath, but then this veil of lightness that's going to come over top. So it's really going to draw, you know, going back to what you were saying, Gerard, about your client wanting them to be noticed, not their hair. Mm -hmm. It's really going to draw the focal right to their face. Yeah. And that's when, you know, when myself and Alicia talk about color is, you know, we always have to have a focal point. Where do we want the color to be? Where do we want to draw the viewer's attention or, or you know, the people that we're talking to attention? And it's always to the face. Now, where on the face is, is going to be determined based on face shape. Um, however, everything that we're doing is thought out ahead of time. And Absolutely. we think about the finished, the finished result and how that hair is going to move around their face and what that's visually going to cause our eye to do. So it's not necessarily just picking a design and putting it on. You have to almost think beyond and visualize the end result as you're working. And you know, if this naturally falls here, what effect is that going to have? And what effect is that going to have on your eye and her face? Fantastic. Well, I want to thank you both yeah. for this incredible, you, uh, incredible education for method education. We did some dry cutting with James and then this beautiful color application. Now, again, I know you guys want to see the end result. So what you want to do is just as you're on your next processing break about an hour from now, just come back to the hair brain page on Facebook, scroll through. We'll have some photos in there for you guys to check out. I want to thank our good friends at Davines for the ongoing thank support you, of our you, craft hair dressing community. And I want to thank you guys for the ongoing support and desire to learn and grow and be educated we're going to finish up this technique and we're going to put some photos up for you peace out guys we'll see you next week bye guys thank you